Uh, my name is Andrew. I am the owner of AE Digital Marketing, where we specialize in literally all things web, from website design and development to search engine optimization, social media uh, marketing, pay-per-click, you name it, we do it. We can help your business. Uh, and I'm here with the Biz Foundry today to kind of go over some of the, uh, the get started tips and tricks on how to position your business and how to really take advantage of everything that we uh, is available. Uh, so, as a business in 2021, it's it's important and it's imperative to have a strong digital presence. Everything from your social media to your website, email campaigns, everything in the middle and between all of that, it's all a piece of the whole and all helps your business do the most important thing, which is make money. And, but all of that is super confusing. Like if you've never, you know, had to deal with picking a hosting service, picking a domain, you know, how do you know if you need an SSL or whatnot? You know, these are all things that can be super confusing and I'm gonna cover those today. So first and foremost, you have to buy hosting and your domain. Your hosting is, think of it as a street. Hosting is where you're, the road that your house is on, where the domain is your house and what's in your house. So, and you have to have both to be, for people to be able to find your, your business on the internet. So first and foremost, you need to pick a good host. Um, some of the best hosting services that are available are HostGator, GoDaddy. Uh, both of these offer web hosting and domain purchasing. Uh, a couple others that only provide hosting are ones like SiteGround or even my company offers hosting. Um, generally, hosting will cost you anywhere from $10 a month to as much as $50, $60 a month, depending on the services that you want tied in with that as far as an SSL certificate, a business email, you know, at your business name here.com and things like this. The big thing to take into consideration when it comes to your domain is you know, make it known what you're doing. So for instance, a bowling alley for, you know, might have a domain of like bowling alley at, or cookvillebowlingalley.com, something similar to that. And the reason we want that is A, is for search, and, search engine optimization uh, reasons. Because if somebody Googles Cookville Bowling Alley, well, your URL is gonna pop up first. And we all know we, we don't scroll past the first, half of the first page on Google. So, you know, being uh, ranked highly on Google, being these other search engines, that's really the bread and butter. And your domain's the first step in ensuring that you rank higher. When it comes to, you know, what kind of extension you need for your domain, .com, .io, .net, 99% of the time a .com is going to be perfectly fine. Uh, and that's all you're going to need. Um, if, you're, if you want a .io, a .net extension, those usually cost a little bit more, but, you know, it's an ad, as needed case, you know, per diem. Uh, when it comes to hosting, uh, for instance, what we offer, what HostGator offers is what we call shared hosting. And what this means is you're sharing a server with other businesses and it helps bring your cost way down. That's when you get it for like six to 10 bucks a month. When you want, you know, your own server, let's say you're a large e-commerce site like Walmart, for instance, they're going to have their own server. But these servers, to have an entire server, that's gonna cost you 50, 60, as much as $100 a month for that. But a shared hosting service, for instance, via HostGator, that's gonna be plenty, and that's gonna be perfectly fine. It's secured. These other uh, businesses on that server don't have access to your site, don't have access to your files, so there's no need to worry there. And when you're signing up for your hosting service, make sure you always uh, select include an SSL certificate, a secure site license. And we'll get into that. Uh, further here in a little bit. So when it comes to the website itself, there are, there are some key things that you need to take into consideration to ensure that your site is user-friendly, is accessible, and it ranks highly. So first and foremost, it needs to be mobile responsive. Everybody access the web via their phones or tablets. It's not just computers anymore. So your site needs to look as good on your phone as it does on, on just a computer. Uh, if I go to your site and it's, you know, the elements are all out of whack and the site loads slowly on mobile and it just is unusable, I'm going somewhere else. And it might mean I go to one of your competitors. You know, 
so a site, as we develop sites, it's called uh, mobile first development because we actually build the site inside of a mobile simulator first and then build the website out as you would see it on a desktop. The second part is your website needs to load quickly. Um, this is also going to affect your search engine rankings because if your site takes longer than, you know, somewhere right around three seconds, A, you're gonna lose your customer base because everybody's attention spans are about two seconds long and Google's gonna dock you. On average, it needs to load at about two to three seconds. And the way we do that is we ensure, you know, your images are next generation, they're JPEGs instead of PNGs. We need to make sure that the images are sized properly. We need to make sure we don't have unneeded code that's gonna slow the processing uh, down. And we do all of this, your site loads quickly, it's great. Uh, along that same vein, we need to make sure your site is SEO optimized. So when somebody Googles a search term relevant to your, to your business, let's use the bowling alley for instance, again, you know, if I Google bowling alley Cookville, you get a list of results. Everybody's used Google. We know this part. But what you may not know is how those sites are ranked. And that's ranked according to everything from the images to the copy itself to uh, the domain, the main domain name that we just mentioned. All of these things factor into the Google algorithm. And we really need to make sure that we influence the algorithm in such a way to it ranks you higher than your, your competition. Because if you rank higher, you get seen or first which is gonna increase your site traffic, which is going to increase your customer base. And the one that is kind of obscure that you might not know about is actually ADA compliance. Now, you see ADA compliance everywhere. It's, you know, your on-ramps, your handlebars, your uh, handicapped parking spaces, these sorts of deals. But that's been expanded into the web and it's actually law now that your sites are as seamless an experience for users that might have a disability, i.e., you know, they might not be able to use their hands to navigate a website or they're colorblind or, you know, just blind in general. Um, your site needs to follow what we call the WCAG uh, compliance guidelines. And this makes sure or ensures that, you know, your images have alt text, that your site takes color contrast ratios into consideration and a bunch of other um, issues that you might not even think about. But if somebody with a disability goes to your site and you know they're using a screen reader and your site's jumpy and they can't get the content that you or I would, or would you know, not even think about would get, that actually opens you up for a lawsuit. And you know, if your site doesn't follow these, these guidelines, then uh, they'll win. Like it's just that simple. Um, Moving on, as far as cost for a website, you know, it's really about how you want to approach it. Um, when it comes to something like, you know, these page builders like Wix or other uh, website builders that you can go on there and you can sign up for a subscription with them and you can do it yourself. But again, if you don't know about, you know, compliance and load times and all of these other things, you might be setting yourself up for failure to be completely blunt about it. And that's where somebody like me comes in. Um, and it really is about what you're wanting your site to do. If you're just wanting a site up that's like, hey, this is us, this is what we're doing, a couple pictures and a contact form, you probably don't need to spend more than about $800. Like, and that's relatively cheap. Um, if you want your site to be a little bit more in depth, you know, home, about, go into a little bit more about what your business offers as far as services, contact forms, uh, some interaction on the page, uh, those generally start at about $2,000. And then we get into the big sites like e-commerce, think, you know, your walmart.coms, your Amazons, that sort of deal. You know, then we have product entry. We need to optimize all of the images to make sure they load quickly and, you know, they're, they're optimized for SEO, all of that sort of deal, payment gateways and everything else like that. That's really where we get it to about four grand. But the thing to remember is, these numbers aren't set in stone. Some people are gonna charge less, some people are gonna charge more. I do recommend shopping around, but I highly discourage just taking the cheapest option because oftentimes when you take the cheapest option, it's gonna to need to be redone. Somebody that charges more, while that is a higher dollar amount versus somebody that you know goes on Fiverr or Upwork or these other freelancing sites, you know, they, they're charging more because they have the experience behind them to ensure the job is done right, done correctly, and it's all done right the first time. 
Um, so that's, that's the big one. When it comes to your site, you need to make sure you have an SSL certificate, a secure site license. And what this does is it helps protect your customer's information. So let's say you have one of these uh, e-commerce sites, you know, people are entering in um, payment information, their credit cards, that sort of deal. If your site doesn't have an SSL, uh, that, that information is actually at risk. And do, if you ever go to a site that doesn't have an SSL and you're purchasing something from them, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and because this is going to protect their payment information, it's going to protect their numbers. Like if you're take if you're a government site or a doctor site, for instance, um, you know people are entering social security numbers, that sort of deal. Uh, you really need to protect them and protect yourself because if that information gets compromised, then you're at liable because it's your website. Something that you might find kind of silly when it comes to your to your business and your web is a a professional email. And that's actually really important. Like I've met uh, people before that won't do work with people that don't have a professional email. And it might seem silly, like, well, duh, you know, your at domain name here, email address, but it's actually big game. It establishes you as an expert and as a professional. And some of the uh, tools that we have available for this is like G Suite. I use G Suite. Uh, almost everybody I know uses G Suite. And it's cheap, it's affordable, it's great. And that's what, that's what I recommend. It's what I use. Make sure you have a professional uh, email address. And the last thing to consider is all of these are pieces of the whole. Um, whether you're doing social media marketing or if you're only marketing you know, via Google or any of these other pay-per-click options, a website or social media marketing, any of it, it's, it's not the end-all be-all. It's like, well, I have a great website, so I should be good. No, you, it's all part of your digital marketing plan. And you need to ensure all these different avenues are done correctly instead of just like, well, I'm going in all on my website and not doing any, anything on social media. Or I'm just doing social media, so I don't need a website. That, that's not the way, the way it works. Um, so just make sure that if you hire a professional or if you're doing it yourself, you're make, make sure that you're you know, taking advantage of all these different avenues because they all interlink in together. Um, outside of that, that's really all there is to it. Um, I know it was a real high level kind of introduction, but you know, this is, you know, the basics. This is how you can get started with your business.